Yeah. Originally it was G, and now I do this mixing construction. What, what do you think the fiber is? Take a wild guess. Huh? M. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And again, it's easy to check because you can start with the product. You know, U cross G. And you do this mixing construction to it, you'll find that you get U cross M. Uh -huh. okay. Um, okay, so uh, now let me, uh, yeah. So now let's see. Let's, uh, let's, I think we have time just to write down <laughs> Cartan's diagram. Mm -hmm. So Cartan's mixing diagram. Uh -huh. OK. Uh, so you have that principal bundle. Uh -huh. P over B, right? And then you have this left G space, M, and you can take the quotient, M over G. Uh -huh. And you have two projections. Uh -huh. And... Um, so these are called pi 1, pi 2. And then you can take the quotient of the Cartesian product by G, and then you get the mixing space. From the mixing space, you have a projection to B. I call that tau 1. I can also define a projection to m over g, that will be tau 2. Okay, so I have this community diagram. Now, this is called Cartan's mixing diagram. And what we know is that this is a principal bundle. Okay, and it implies that tau 2 is a fiber bundle. And then um, the fact that uh, the fiber is M actually comes from the fact that G acts freely on P, okay? On a principal bundle, G acts freely. G acts freely on P implies that the fiber of tau 2 is M, okay? Uh-huh. Now, now, the thing to remember about this is that, um, yeah, so if this is a principal bundle, then this map will be a fiber bundle. And if G acts freely on M, then what is the fiber of this map? It's going to be P. OK? Yeah. So the fiber of this map is this corner because G acts freely on this. And if G acts freely here, then the fiber of this map will be that one, will be this corner. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's how it works. Okay. And um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to state the theorem, and we will stop, and then we'll prove this theorem next time. Okay. So the theorem will be this: that. Uh, theorem. Uh -huh. So 
in the category of CW complexes, uh -huh. um, suppose G acts on the left on M and E and E prime are contractible spaces on which G acts freely, then, uh -huh. then when you form the mixing spaces, that's actually the homotopy quotient, right? Then, if you form the homotopy quotient with these two different contractible spaces, then they are homotopic equivalent. Okay? And that would prove that equivariant cohomology is well defined independent of the contractible space on which G acts freely that you choose. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, this theorem is also in the book, uh, but the proof I give in the book is a fairly long proof, you know, um, and, and I, I realize now that there is a very short proof using Cartan's mixing diagram so, you know, this proof that I'm going to give is not in the book. But I will revise the book so that it will be there. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, but Cartan's mixing diagram is in the book. Okay. So, so next time, I'll just give you the proof. It's just a few lines. This theorem will follow from Cartan's mixing diagram, you know, in just a few lines. And then we'll use Cartan's mixing diagram to prove other things, too. Yeah. So it is a very, very useful tool, okay? All right, I will stop here. And again, um, you know, if you want hints on the homework, just send me an email message, yeah, and I will send you a sheet of hints, okay? All right. <laughs>